If you love the power of the mixer here in Logic Pro for iPad, but kind of miss having visibility of all of your tracks, I've got the solution for you. It's the fader panel. It's very, very cool. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Let's go. So if like me, you've come from GarageBand or another digital audio workstation, this is a very familiar view for you. You've got all of your tracks here and you can adjust your volumes as well as your recording and your mute here. And the beauty of this is you can see exactly where you are at any time, where all your tracks are and you can line things up. However, in Logic Pro for iPad, we've got the mixer, which gives you a whole lot more finite ability to adjust panning, to adjust your volume, to change and add your plugins. It's really powerful, but you don't always need all that power. What if there was something in between? Well, there is, and it's a combination of using your main workspace view and the fader. To access the fader, we tap on this button in the bottom left corner, and what this gives you is an individual volume fader or channel strip for the selected track. So as we move up and down here and select different tracks, you'll see that our channel strip, our fader, changes based on the track that we've got selected selected and we can adjust things while still being in this main workspace view. So why is this so handy when it really just replicates a lot of what you can do out here in the main panel? Well, it's the ability to make some more fine-tuned adjustments. So for volume in particular, one of the limitations out here is you can't see, if we turn off the fader, you can't see where your volume's actually set at. It's very sort of vague and not really precise. Whereas if we turn on the fader and we tap and hold on this one, see at the top there, you can see exactly where, everywhere from unity gain at zero, right up to plus six, and right down into the minuses there and you'll see it'll represent over here on your main panel but you just get much more precise control if you just need a bit of a movement of a couple of db up and down this is an easy way to adjust the volume of your track to make it sit nicely in your mix for instance if we want to make sure this bass is sitting in our mix right we can hit play on this track and i can adjust the bass volume as we go And it just gives you that precision control you need when you're doing a mix. Even more useful, if you like having a bigger view out here, if we slide that across and you wanna be able to see more of your tracks out here or even scroll down so that you've got a smaller view of all of your tracks there, you can still use this to not only adjust your volumes, but do things like set up your recording. So you can trigger the recording there. You can solo tracks, you can mute tracks, and you can do it all from this one panel down the side without having to have it open across all of your different tracks. So it's really convenient if you like a little bit more screen real estate. Next up is panning. It's a really convenient place to see all of your panning. So as we scroll down here and tap on different tracks, you can see here that my guitar is panned left there and right there. And if we want to say switch those around, it's really quick and easy and convenient to do that. We've got really good visibility of exactly where everything is on our left center and right panning. You'll also notice that we have a little measure of volume here. That's your peak volume for that track. So this is really handy to make sure you're not overdoing it on a track and you're not clipping. Anything that goes into the yellow or the red there, you need to keep an eye on. So for instance, we play back this bass track and we turn it up, just keep an eye on that little box there and you'll see what happens. <laughs> So see when we turn it up, it's actually gone orange. So it's, that's telling us that the volume on that track is too loud and we need to turn it down. So it gives you a nice visual indicator and to get rid of that, you just tap on it. It just is another way to make sure that you're not overcooking your mixes. And the fader is great when you're mixing. Obviously it gives you all of those tools that we just showed you, but it's also great when you're recording because it is the one place that shows all of your input and output settings at a glance. And to get to those, we tap on the top here on our little icon that's the settings icon and here we can see exactly what input we're using and you can change that up here. You can set the input, you can set the bus, you can change the channel format from stereo to mono if you need to do that. And you can also see the output. So if you're not hearing your audio back, you can make sure it's going to the correct output. You can also do things like turn on your input monitoring, which changes down here, turns on input monitoring. You can freeze tracks, you can use solo safe there and you can even create groups and group your tracks directly from this option. 
So your option setting here on your fader is a quick and easy way to get to all of the essential things you'll need to check when you're recording guitars, vocals, and other instruments. So there you have it, my favorite go-to secret source here in Logic Pro for iPad, the fader. It gives you a lot of the power you get from the mixer without all of the clutter and all the stuff you don't need. And it makes recording and mixing here in Logic Pro for iPad a breeze. If you'd like to learn a whole heap more about recording and creating and releasing your music using Logic Pro for iPad, check out the playlist down in the description. Heaps of videos there. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you liked it. And I'll see you next time.